So informal fallacies have exceptions. Um, formal fallacies do not. They're like absolutes. But informal fallacies have exceptions. And this is why they're called informal. Yet you have to look at the content of the premises and conclusion and not just the form. So here's some examples. Composition is the informal fallacy, uh, which uh, happens when we fallaciously move from the part to the whole. So for example, if I argue every player in the team is good, so the whole team is good, right? We cannot move from the parts to whole in this case because they may have team uh, poor teamwork, so it's fallacious. However, the following argument is not a composition fallacy, even though it moves from the parts to the whole as well. And this argument says each part of the stapler has mass, so the whole stapler has mass. Right? That's not fallacious if you think about it. So the content matters. You must look at the particulars of each situation. You cannot tell by the form alone the form in this case being part to whole, you cannot tell by the form alone whether it's fallacious. You have to look at the content and that's why they're called informal fallacies. Here's another example, ad hominem, where you attack the person. Now it's usually a fallacy to attack the person, however in a courtroom it's okay to question the character of a witness. The lawyers are trying to determine whether we should trust their testimony, so it's okay to look at their character. Right? In, in many cases. However, it's fallacious to argue we should reject his tax policy because he cheated on his wife. In this case, we're looking at him instead of his evidence and argument, his tax policy. So the context is key, not just the form, when it comes to informal fallacies. Now, formal fallacies, on the other hand, you see one on the screen here, are always and absolutely fallacious. It doesn't matter what content you put in. The context and content doesn't matter. You can tell by the form alone that it's deductively invalid, fallacious. Right? So, for example, affirming the consequent, which you see on the screen, is always invalid, no matter what we put in for P or Q. So to learn more about this distinction, you can see my video titled Formal versus Informal Fallacies. But the main point I want to make is about informal fallacies. The point is that it's sometimes good, it's sometimes a good form of reasoning to criticize the person's character, uh, to move from the parts to the whole, to criticize the origin, and so on. Only formal fallacies are absolute. Thanks.